Uh, now we're, we're, we're looking at how they, 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 they play. I, if you think about it, the last big time it was a, a big game changer was way back in 1976, right? Well, that's when a fellow named Jimmy Carter, who was on no one's list among the 35 prospective presidential candidates that year, uh, finished second be, behind, you know, undecided. But it was enough to propel him later on to the Democratic nomination and give this guy who was known as Jimmy O the Democratic nomination that year and when all was said and done, the presidency that year when he beat Gerald Ford. Iowa State University political science professor Stefan Schmidt with us right now. Professor, good to have you. Um, there's this effort now afoot to try to derail Ted Cruz. It doesn't take much, I guess, to, to do that in, 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 in the way the caucus vote is handled. But I guess they're trying to reach out to non-caucus participants. What does that mean? What are they doing? Well, that's right, Neil. I mean, the Iowa caucuses are all about making personal contact with people, convincing them that you're their guy, and having them actually show up on caucus night. And I think that's what Rick Santorum did. Uh, we didn't realize it until caucus night. He really, really nailed it by going to 99 counties and getting a lot of people to show up at those 1,700 precinct caucuses and saying he's the guy. What happens, Professor, with some of the experts get it so wrong. I mean, I remember, um, you know, four years ago, it looked like it was Mitt Romney's state to lose. Rick Santorum, we find out, confirmed days later, was the actual winner that cost him valuable, needed publicity, and when that is back. Uh, but, but more often than not, um, I don't believe Barack Obama eight years ago was expected to win Iowa, let alone Hillary Clinton finished third behind both uh, Senator Obama at the time. And, and Senator Edwards at the time. So what is it that changes so quickly at the last second? I'll tell you what it is. It is the fact that voters go to their precinct, they talk for, for a little bit with their neighbors who are at that precinct, and some of them actually get talked out of the guy that they told the last pollster they were gonna vote for, and they vote for the most convincing argument that's made in each one of those precincts. And that is very different from a primary. In a primary, you know who you want to vote for, right. you stop and vote on your way to work or, or back home, and, and your numbers are probably close to what the polls said. In the caucuses on that night, a lot of minds can be changed. Now, by going after those who normally don't participate in these caucuses, Professor, what are they hoping to do? If someone is not of a mindset, to spend hours doing whatever they have to do to be part of this process. How do you woo them? I imagine if the numbers are small to begin with, it wouldn't take that many to sway them, right? Well, that's right, Neil. And, and the thing that you do is you sell the fact that it is really important that this is the year that is going to make a huge difference, that America is in crisis, and that your guy is the one who can save it, and you should go. And Donald Trump, I think, to some extent at least, as an unknown, as a, we, we don't know who his supporters are, but he certainly has gone after a lot of people who have not participated in caucuses before. And the big question is, uh, you know, are they going to show up? And if they do, uh, he could do very well. You know, dumb question on my part, uh, Professor, but you've been enduring all of them, so I appreciate that. One is that Iowa seems to be much more of a, of a potential trendsetter for Democrats than it does Republicans. The last two Republican Iowa winners didn't get very far, um, whereas Democrats a lot of times tend to capitalize off of success in this state. Is, is that a rule of thumb or just a, a fluke or, or what? I think the, the Democratic Party is, is not as divided as the Republicans. It's not as interesting. There are fewer factions, hmm. and so you get uh, front runners, and the end results are between that small number, as you said, the last time around, you know, or with Hillary Clinton and Obama, at least it was, you know, three people and not 15 people. Uh, right. It's a lot easier to essentially get it right when you've got a smaller number. I mean, the Republican Party is so blessed by the fact that they have such a rich field of candidates, and they've had that before, but it makes it a lot harder to consolidate and predict before, because, you know, you've got so many. Yeah, you're right. Professor, real honor having you. Thank you. Thank you, Neil.